guaranteed plan for you is to have all-round success. Therefore, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You are invited as you listen to the senior pastor, Daystar Christian Center, Pastor Sam Adeyemi. And this morning, I want us to just discuss the characteristics of an entrepreneur. The characteristics of an entrepreneur. Or the traits of an entrepreneur. Because some people just write themselves off, you know. Uh, I can never do business. People like me don't start business. So we want to find out the kind of people that start business. And see whether you qualify or not. Generally, an entrepreneur, we have said, is someone who designs new products or services to meet the needs of mankind. I think from Genesis chapter 1 that the first entrepreneur ever was God himself. Okay? In the beginning, God created. And I think that's a basic quality of an entrepreneur. He created the heavens and the earth. The earth became void. Darkness covered the face of the deep. But out of that darkness and this ugly situation, he still saw the potential for new things and created new things, new products, new services. I think God is the greatest entrepreneur of all. And, if, and the interesting thing is that he created us in his own image. So if you are a child of God, you have the character of God, I think you are in a position to be a dreamer, to be a creative person, to be an innovative person, and especially to be a leader and a good manager of resources. Anyway, I sincerely believe that this is one of the most important training that we need in our country today. In the next 10 years, things are going to change at a very fast pace, such that people will, some people will literally feel like the ground is being removed from under them. Things are going to change very, very fast. Given the fact that most people are afraid of change to the extent that they resist it, in fact, most of us are afraid of change to the extent that we resist it. It is necessary for us to develop the mindset of an entrepreneur. It would help us to be adaptable, help us to be flexible, help us to see the change that is coming not as a problem but as an opportunity. Okay? Because it depends a whole lot on how you see it. Most people see change as a problem. They don't see it as an opportunity. And when change comes, it's a wave. You either drown in it or you ride it. You can surf the wave. Any change that comes, I believe, is a wave allowed by God to come. And you can ride or surf that wave if you have the correct mindset. We've been so used to the way things have been for very long. Many people would be fighting just to retain their position, just to keep things going. But listen, things are going to change. And they are going to change very fast. But they are going to change in your favor. Amen. Did I hear you say amen? amen. Good. Um, one of our brothers uh, met with me in the office this week. And she had a very, very powerful testimony. He lost his job oh, a year ago. Things became so bad where he was working, he had to resign. He had to leave the job. His wife was just about to deliver. And um, he had nothing. He, he, he had literally nothing to start with. 
But all the same, he knew he just had to get out or else the situation would get worse. So he got out and instead of looking for another job, started a business. And um, that was about when he began to come to Daystar. And the good news is that one year later, he has no regrets whatsoever at all. Uh, and when someone pays tight, one single check of 1.3 million naira, I'm sure you know he has no regrets whatsoever for going into business. But he told me that just before he had to leave his job, they had just given him a powerful salary raise that increased his salary to 38,000 naira per month. Last year, this time last year. Okay? <laughs> so, just one year after he left, I mean, the 1.3 million naira was tight from the profit on one single job, on one contract. He has no regrets at all. Amen. He was very excited. He is very happy. Amen. You don't need to preach a sermon to get him to sing praise and worship now. He's excited. All right? Um, well, that shows, first of all, one of the reasons why people start businesses, advanced circumstances. In fact, it's one of the major reasons. Once things begin to go wrong around you, the boss who liked you before doesn't like you anymore, uh, you, you begin to get queries that you were not getting before, you begin to get warnings, and so on. And sometimes it can happen without you actually doing things that are wrong. But I say this, how do we know that the season is changing? Is it not when things around us begin to change? Is it not when rain uh, does not fall as frequently as it was falling before? Is it not when the leaves begin to go yellow and begin to drop off the trees? Is it not when the grasses begin to go brown that we suddenly realize that the season is now changing? Uh, um, when the rains begin to come, we know that the season is changing again. When circumstances around you that were favorable before become unfavorable, when things begin to change, understand your season is changing. Most of the opportunities God will give you in life will not last forever. God spoke to the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings 17, go to the brook chariot. I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. But after some time, they said that the brook began to dry up. The interesting thing is the water doesn't stop all of a sudden. But the quantity of water flowing and the brook begins to reduce. The problem with us is when it begins to reduce, we begin to try to, we, we believe it's the devil. And we begin to rebuke the devil that is not allowing the water to flow. And we begin to try to find whatever we can do to get the quantity of water to increase. But Elijah prayed, and the Lord told him, fasting and prayer will not work here. There's no point knocking on a door that God himself has allowed to close. Move on to somewhere else. He said, go on to Sarepath. I have commanded a widow to feed you there. So adverse circumstances generally motivate people to consider starting their own businesses. And uh, there's another reason, inadequate compensation. Inadequate compensation. When a person feels that he or she is just being used. When people feel that they are not being adequately rewarded for the kind of work or the level of work they are doing, it tends to encourage them to go on to start on their own. Um, planning is winning. If you sit down to plan your future, it helps you a great deal. You know, Moses said, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You'll be surprised. How much wisdom it would impart into you if you sit down to plan 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now. Uh, especially if you're a Christian man or woman and you have read Proverbs 13, 22, where it says that a good man leaves an inheritance for his children and his children's children after him are blessed. When you, when you sit down to really consider that and ask yourself, if something happens to you now, what will you leave for your children? 
not to talk of your children's children. When you sit down to consider that, it imparts, it opens your heart to a lot of wisdom. Now, for many people, when they sit down to calculate on that, they will get to realize that their current level of income just can't do it. By the time you set a time pace or, or a time period or goal for you to become financially free and for you to be able to put up an estate or a legacy, you may suddenly realize that there is nothing. Like my lawyer told me, uh, he spoke to the financial controller of a big company, very wealthy man, highly placed. Uh, kids go to the best schools around the world. And then the man wanted to write his will. And when they were to list his assets, he found out he didn't have anything. He was shocked. And then it occurred to him that if something happened to him then, those kids who were enjoying the best in the world would just crash. Their level of comfort and welfare would crash. And that gave him a lot of wisdom to plan. So when people think like that, Sometimes they suddenly find out that the current level of income they are getting or salary they are getting just can't get them to their destination financially. It does encourage people sometimes to start their own jobs or their own businesses. And of course, some other time, it's just the fact that the owner of the company is enjoying most of the money and paying everybody else peanuts. Then you have the saying, monkey the walk. Baboon the chop. So the monkey too decides to become a baboon, okay? <laughs> so that he can chop, all right? <laughs> you can't contest the fact that uh, the greatest benefits will always be derived by the person who took the risk to start the company and who takes the responsibility to get it running. And if you feel, come on, I, I, I deserve something better. Sometimes people start businesses for that reason. And then, of course, uh, Another reason is politics and bureaucracy. Some people can't stick it. Some people just can't stick it. In fact, some people just can't even stick someone giving them orders. They can't work under somebody else for too long. And it's good you follow your, instead of trying to tear somebody's company apart. In fact, before you do, they will sack you. So, <coughs> excuse me. It's good you follow your heart and get moving. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, um, so there's also the desire for independence. The desire for independence. You want to be your own boss. You're tired of being... Um, in our book, Parable of Dollars, uh, there's a chapter there titled Money Power. And there we talked about the fact that it will help you a whole lot if you can de define your own values as an individual. For some people, independence is a value. Like, I value independence a whole lot. Freedom to make my decisions, freedom to do it, freedom to try it, freedom to, to, to experiment, freedom to find what works, and then to be able to focus on what works, freedom to be able to improve, freedom, freedom to be able to design, and to be able to carry out my designs. Some people, want independence. And then one other reason, an important one why people start their own business is financial freedom. Financial freedom. Like I said earlier on, you can just find out, look, if I keep going, taking one step after the other like this, it won't pay me and I don't have much time. I want to make it uh, in 10 years time. I want to hit my goal. That's a good enough reason. And for some people, they desire, they have a sense, they, they want a sense of achievement. Some people want to succeed. Some people just find out they like to succeed. Okay? I'm like that. I, I like achievement. I like success. It makes life, life fulfilling. makes life worthwhile. I'm goal-oriented. Okay? So you may just find out you're like that. Some people um, start businesses because they desire to have a sense of achievement. Anyway, remember what I said. More than ever before, you need to be prepared to take advantage of the changes that are coming. The government is going to introduce a lot of changes. 
a lot of new laws, a lot of new rules. There are laws that have not been effective for a long time. They are going to be enforced. The government is going to try to create an environment where we can be productive. They have started already. They're trying to adjust on the exchange rate to discourage round tripping so that the banks will not major too much on making money through foreign exchange. They can channel their monies through the productive, to the productive sector. Okay, they've put a whole lot of restrictions on importation of frozen foods. They've not banned them outright, but they put a whole lot of restrictions on them. They have to be certified. For you to go through all those restrictions, you may find that it's better for you to start a poultry business here. That's what they're trying to do. They, they, they want to slow down what's coming from outside and then encourage us to start new businesses. The first thing you will hear everybody do is complain. And I found that the more you complain, the less you obtain. Okay, the, what you have to do is to have good eyes, enough good eyes to take advantage of the situation that is coming. Now, even if you don't start a business, the existing businesses and organizations would need to change so quickly and to adapt so fast if you retain your old style of thinking and you are not flexible or adaptable, you may be out of your job before long. So you still need the mindset of an entrepreneur to keep your job and especially to rise to the top in your career. It is those who are innovative, those who are creative, those who can help to save time or save money or create new sources or avenues for their companies, those who can in fact start a new line of business altogether for their organizations or companies that are going to be able to survive uh, the change that is coming in the next few years you will make it. That's why we are here. Amen. All right, now, there is no particular personality type or temperament trait that is the best for business, for starting a business or for being an entrepreneur. That's what I found out. I used to think that there were some personality traits that were not suitable, but having done my research for a few years, I have found out that entrepreneurs cut across all the temperament types. You'll be surprised. Entrepreneurs cut across all the temperament types. You have the cholerics, you have the sanguines, you have the melancholies, you have the phlegmatics. When it comes to entrepreneuring, we cut across all of the temperament types. Entrepreneuring is also not the exclusive reserve of any particular sex or race, or age group, okay? Some people think, okay, maybe men, men are better entrepreneurs than women. I'm sorry. You're going to have a whole lot of women now who are entrepreneurs. In fact, entrepreneuring a whole lot of times suits a woman's agenda or program better than keeping a job, or else she has to keep a job that will make it very, very flexible for her. Especially when you live in the city like we do. It's too fast-paced. It, uh, if you take a, a, a job that will keep you in the office till 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, and you want to raise children and build a family, you may just find out a whole lot of time that is not suitable for a woman. And it may just be better for her to start a small business. Okay? Um, entrepreneuring is not the exclusive uh, inheritance of a particular race. Amen? It doesn't depend on color. In fact, it's now our own turn. <laughs> Every, people of all colors and races start businesses. And then, it's not the exclusive inheritance of any age group. Because some people may tend to think, oh, it's older people who have worked for many years, who have retired, that should now start businesses of their own. I'm sorry. The age at which people start businesses is getting lower and lower by the day. You remember, if you've studied very well, the richest people in the world, you know they're the people in the IT business, information technology business, and you will realize most of those guys started in their 20s. And you have loads of them in the United States now who are millionaires in their 20s. Millionaires in their 20s. 
So now you are getting to find people in their 20s who are starting business. In fact, you are getting to find people in their teens who are starting business. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is this. You are not too old to start a business. Neither are you too young to start a business. Amen. Okay? Um, and then, it doesn't particularly belong to any level of educational qualification. Again, some people would disqualify themselves just because they don't have a university degree. But if you study very, very, very well some of the most powerful entrepreneurs around the world, you will discover it's not all of them that have university degrees. The richest man in the world as of today is Bill Gates of Microsoft. And Bill Gates dropped out of the university in the first year. Amen. By now, everybody should have realized a university degree does not automatically guarantee you money. Amen. <laughs> in fact, you have to go through the university with the kind of knowledge that we're pushing out now about entrepreneurial or else, by the time you come out, you would have been so indoctrinated, you will come out with your certificate looking for a job and wanting to attend interviews and writing aptitude tests until you are tired of writing aptitude tests. Amen. Some people really measure their success by the number of applications they have submitted. They have submitted 4,000. Congratulations. Okay. You, you, so the, the, it's not a university degree. While it is important, while it helps you better to be adaptable to situations or circumstances, on the other hand, too, it seems to condition your mind to want to work for somebody else. If you look around very well, you will find out people of all levels of educational qualification start businesses. Okay? Vulcanizers start on their own. People who sell spare parts start on their own. It's to you're starting a business, maybe your PhD degree. If you read it to the point where you have a PhD, you know you're a doctor of philosophy. So you may tend to be more academic than practical. Okay? But PhD holders also start a lot of businesses. So whatever your educational qualification, you can start a business. Anyway, let me quickly list some common traits of entrepreneurs. Number one, they have a strong desire to succeed. Strong desire. I can't, in fact, I'm going to take a, 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 a whole session to address this issue of a strong desire. It's a major, major, major requirement. You can't go into entrepreneuring just with a mere wish to succeed. It's going to be a passion. It's got to be a strong desire. Like uh, this uh, Christian businessman, an insurance magnate in the United States, A.L. Williams, put it. He said, you've got to want it so bad you can't stand it. That's how he describes it. I want it so bad I can't, I can't stand it. <laughs> okay? So I found that entrepreneurs need that. They are usually people who are self-driven. They are usually people who have a lot of determination. The average person who has succeeded in business has tried quite a number of things that did not work. And even in the course of building a business and getting one to work, they start many things that don't work and they adapt. Sometimes they fail, they try again, but they have unquenchable desire, strong determination to succeed. They're usually people who take the initiative. They're not people who wait for things to happen. They're usually people who make things to happen. It's very important. As a second trait, I've noticed about entrepreneurs, which you will find about God in Genesis 1, the power of vision. The power of vision. There are people who, just, who don't just see things the way they are. They see things the way they could be. They don't just see problems. They see opportunities. And because they take initiative, they do something about it. That's what makes you an entrepreneur. Okay? So there are people who have the power of vision. And usually they are crusaders. They are crusaders. 
they see a particular problem that people have and they have such a strong passion to solve it. Strong passion to solve that problem. Someone like um, Henry Ford. Henry Ford, who, first of all, saw the possibility for the creation of a petrol engine. He, 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 in his garage, he began to experiment. Eventually, he did it. And then he began to manufacture cars for people, but the cars were expensive. He was making good money. It was rich people that placed orders for those cars. But then, he was still dissatisfied. He had a vision. Only rich people rode cars then. He said, come on. I see the average family in America being able to afford a car. I want them to ride cars. So he had to find a way of making the car cheap. That's the power of vision. He saw it as a possibility. Today it's happening. When he told his business partners or his board of directors, let's increase production to 1,000 cars per day, they screamed. In fact, he had to resign from that company because they didn't agree to him. He resigned from his own company and started another one. Their question was, who will buy, who will buy them? And then when he was at the 1,000 per day level, one day he spoke to, um, to his board of directors, let's increase production to 4,000 cars per day. They said, come on, you create a glut in the market. Nobody's going to buy them. But he saw it. He saw the possibility. Entrepreneurs have the power of vision. And then they're usually hard workers. Hard, hard work is a basic trait of entrepreneurs. Hard work. You can't take that away. They love what they're doing. They enjoy what they're doing. They are passionate about what they're doing. For them, the line between work and leisure is usually blood. Usually blood. Their work is their leisure. Check it out. They give it whatever it will take. I read um, the book written by the chairman and the founder of the Dewu Corporation. And he talked about when they started. There was a common thing for them to sleep over in the office. Their spouses at home too knew that if they didn't see them, it was okay. They had done all night. It was not only church that was doing all night then. They did the work operation used to do all night. Passionate, hard working people. Okay? Entrepreneurs work very hard. If you're lazy, don't even think about it. Okay? <laughs> and then entrepreneurs are usually people who challenge the status quo. Or you can put it this way they are non conformists non-conformists, they challenge or challenge the status quo. While everybody can settle with it, accept it the way it is, it's the entrepreneur that asks, why not? Why can't we do it this other way? Why can't we try it this other way? It should not remain this way forever. Entrepreneurs challenge the status quo. That's why they create new products and services. Okay? create new products and services. And then they have leadership ability. Leadership ability. While they have clear goals, they have the ability to share their passion, their vision with other people. They have the ability to mobilize other people and galvanize them to action. They have the, that ability to get it going, to organize divide the job to people, motivate them, and get people going to get this job done. You can't do without leadership ability if you're starting out afresh. Interestingly, these are traits that should be normal for the average believer. If you live in line with the word of God, if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you should see new things. Be not conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. So it's the believer that should see possibilities in the midst of impossibilities. That should recognize opportunities in the midst of problems. You will see new things. You see, this country is loaded with opportunities. And like I said, in the next 10 years, there's going to be a rapid change. There's going to be an explosion of opportunities. The average person will not recognize them. They will see problems, big problems. All they will be watching will be the value of the exchange rate. That will be their problem. 
their buying power will be going down. They will be looking at the economic indices from the World Bank and UNDP and they will be discouraged. But for you, it won't be so. This is the best time to prosper in this country. I said this is the best time to prosper in this country. It's an explosion of opportunities. The service culture, especially in this country, is, is, is something else. My phone company tossed my line this week without telling me why. And I discovered just about when I was to make a very important call. So, the next day, I wrote a letter. Disconnect. I am no longer interested in the service. I was about to make a very important call yesterday, and I, I learned very painfully that my line had been tossed. And it's a new phone company. And I decided to take this billing style just so I won't run out of credit and be able to make my call whenever I want to. So I sent one of our staff to drop my letter and give them and watch their reaction. They told my staff, tell him to write a covering note that will authorize you to collect the bill. And even after you have paid, we won't be connecting until after one month. I said, you see, they have, you see now, they've become so blinded. They didn't even see what I wrote. They said I should send to collect the bill. I said, I don't want again. They said I should send to collect the bill. And that is after one month. You said one month. I said, I'm no longer interested. Disconnect my line and my wife's line. They said, I should send. I said, when they're ready to collect their money, they will send the bill into my email address like they normally used to do. I should pay my staff, pay the transport money to come and collect the bill because that was what they met Nitel doing that has been holding all of us to ransom. Thank God a new, a second national career is coming. Nitel adjust or die. That's the plain truth. Toss everybody's line to get their attention so that they can come to collect their bill. And it's the money we are paying that they used to pay your salary, that you used to pay your children's school fees. Our thinking has been turned upside down, but thank God. That's why we're here. I said, that's why we're here. Ah, some people here will own uh, telecommunications outfits. Uh, th those who will own TV stations are here. Newspaper houses, radio stations. We will run them out of business. It's grow or go. Grow or go. Change or die. When we show up on the scene with superior service. Did I hear you say amen? amen? You can start in your little way wherever it is. Anytime you need a service and you are messed up, please understand you just encountered a potential area for business. One man wrote to uh, the producer of a program in the United States, of a TV program. I want the transcript of that program. It took four weeks before they could get the transcripts to him. He said, wow. And these were popular programs watched by, this, this particular one was a popular program watched by millions of people. So he wrote to the producer of the program, I can see you have challenges producing the transcripts. Can I produce the transcripts for you? And anybody who wants the transcripts, all you have to do is just put my phone number and email address. Just show it on the screen and tell anybody who wants transcripts to write to that address. I will help you. I will transcribe. You know what he did? You know what he did? He watched a particular program one night, transcribed it, he recorded it, transcribed it, typed it before morning, and as soon as it was daylight, he took it to the producer of the program. He said, this was it. This is the transcript of the program that you had last night. So can I do this for you? I'll, I'll, I'll send it to people for a fee. And I'll even pay you royalty on each copy that I sell. What, what will it cost them? It was already a big problem for them to send to people. It took them four weeks to get people's transcripts to them. Said, Go on. So he sells each one for between three to five dollars. And sometimes there are some particular episodes or editions that are explosive. And people request for them big time. There was a particular one. Uh, people requested for 100,000 transcripts of a particular episode. 
And these are daily programs. Just one. Three dollars. 100,000 copies. It's 300,000 dollars in one day. Won't you like that? So as you move around in this country and experience shoddy services, please let your eyes be open. It's the dawn of a new day in this country. Stand to your feet with me. The government is very, very important. The state of the government. Politics is very critical to business. You see, where, where, when we get to that level, we'll begin to discuss that too. There's a point to, you get to a business where you can't leave politics alone. Because politics can kill your business within 24 hours. Coca-Cola doesn't sit down when they're about to have election for the president of the United States. <laughs> okay, there's a particular company in the United States. They are the ones who choose the minister for finance. Oh, yes. They are that strong. And they have they sat down with that. The guy, the person who will go in for fight, they don't want somebody who will kill their business. All the government does is laws. So I want us to start from there. Lord, protect our democracy. Protect our government. Give the government wisdom. Help them to create the right environment for this nation to prosper. Will you lift your voice this morning and let us pray? It matters. Of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we stand here today as the ones ready to cooperate with you to bat new things in this country. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, let it happen. Use us for your glory. Open our eyes to recognize the opportunities that are coming. And, Father, in Jesus' name, your word says, when the righteous are in authority, the city rejoices. So, Lord, by the blood of the covenant, we banish unrighteous people from the seats of government in this country. Those who will not obey your will will not find the road to the government houses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And over election 2003, we prophesy peace. Thank you. This week, we receive favor and declare it's our week of good news in our businesses and our finances. In Jesus' mighty name, say amen. Let's be seated. We know these words have triggered a process of transformation in your life. However, it is not what you hear that counts, but what you do with what you hear. For additional tape copies and a free catalogue of other tapes and books, please contact the address on the label of this tape. God bless you. wonders of the word of God have begun. You are destined to succeed. You will succeed. For additional tapes, CDs and books, please contact us through the address on this CD. God bless you.